Uh, I'm really, really happy to have Dr. Charles Lynn here today to talk about work that he's been doing to try to understand the biology of brachyuri as a step towards uh, developing new therapies that can actually target and shut down this very important transcription factor, this very important gene that uh, we've heard drives chordoma. So um, it's been really a pleasure to work with Dr. Lynn for the last several years, first when he was in Boston at the Broad Institute and now uh, as he is faculty here at Baylor. So Charles, take it away. Thank you, Josh. And uh, this has been really amazing. Um, I really appreciate the CF for putting this together today. Being able to, as a basic scientist, interact with the clinicians and the patients who are afflicted by this disease is really motivating to us and it helps ground our research. Um, it's clear that there are tremendous advances in surgery and in radiotherapy in this disease. Um, the stuff that Claudio just showed was kind of jaw-dropping to me. Uh, it's early days, though, for systemic therapy, and, and that's what our lab studies. And I'll cut right to the chase. Uh, we want to be able to directly target brachyuri. So this is the famous brachyuri that you've all heard so much about. It is a very special kind of protein. Most of the genes in our body code for a protein that does something. Brachyuri's function is not to be an enzyme or to move something around. It's to actually turn on and off other genes. And so these genes are called transcription factors. And they really represent the master control switches of the cell. So if you learn one thing about brachyuri is that it's a gene that controls other genes. It does so by binding to your genome. It binds directly to the DNA. Here you can see the DNA and the protein above it. And it's an essential protein that's required in early development. And here's what I mean by that. In early development, we have this structure that I'm sure many of you have heard about, the notochord. And inside this notochord, there is a streak of cells that almost all express brachyuri. Chordoma is very similar in that it's the only other cell type that we you know, regularly see that has uh, brachyuri expressed. And, and this is both uh, gives us clues to the origins of chordoma and it's also very exciting from a therapeutic standpoint. Because if you look at a healthy adult and you look at all the tissues in their body, there's almost no brachyuri anywhere. Uh, this is almost like a clean slate all the way through. And that means that if we can find ways to get rid of brachyuri in your tumor, it's likely that we'll have a really good toxicity profile because no other cells in your body have it to begin with. It also gives us some insights into the origins of chordoma. I think um, Nelson and Wei um, summed this up very nicely, that chordomas are cells that have failed to turn off brachyuri. And so the field has really established that these are cells that are addicted to this transcription factor. And in really elegant work over the last several years, um, folks have shown that if you can take chordoma cells and if you can turn off brachyuri using genetic tools, the cells senesce, they stop growing, they flatten out. And this is really sort of a central paradigm of cancer and of tumor biology. That when we think about tumor cells, they do two things. They learn lethal functions and they forget normal functions. They forget what they're supposed to be. And we think that brachyuria is really involved in this spot, that in promoting early embryonic differentiation, it somehow blocks later differentiation. The cells have forgotten to turn into the terminal lineage that they were supposed to be. And so this is sort of the essential question of our lab and in our project to study chordoma. We think brachyuri is at the center of chordoma and we want to target it. We think it'll be a good target if we can get rid of it. But here's the hard part. Every drug you've ever taken almost always falls into this kind of mold. It's a small molecule, so that means it's just a very sort of small kind of structure and it typically binds to what's called an active site in a protein. And many of these proteins are proteins that have very specific jobs. They're the kinases, the proteases. And by sort of sticking hand in glove, lock and key, a small molecule into this site, you can prevent its function. Brachyuri falls into this category that we really don't like the name. They call them undruggable targets. And they call them undruggable targets because there's no obvious active site. There's no obvious pocket in the protein that allows brachyuri to do its job. Uh, but we don't like this term undruggable. We think it just means we haven't tried hard enough and we haven't brought the right approaches and science to it. 
And so for the last two years, we've been really working with the Coroma Foundation and our collaborators at the Broad to think about how do we actually approach drugging undruggable targets like brachyuri. I'll tell you two of our strategies today. The first is that we want to turn it off. Every gene in your genome is itself controlled by other proteins, other transcription factors, other genes like brachyuri that make sure their levels are on in the right cells and off in the wrong cells. And we will want to understand how brachyuri stays on in chordoma in order to turn it off. To very briefly summarize what we've found, we know that brachyuria is regulated by something called an enhancer. Enhancers are pieces of your genome. They don't code for another gene. Instead, what they do is they allow other genes to be turned on and off. And they do this by being bound by proteins that bring these pieces of DNA called enhancers over to the genes, and this leads to the genes turning on. And so we really think that brachyuri fits into this sort of form of regulation. And that makes it very special because the genes that are regulated by enhancers tend to be the ones that you only need in very few tissues. We have in our lab um, the capability to map enhancers, to map the marks on the genome, the proteins that bind there that really tell us that this is an active enhancer. Uh, this is the famous JHC7 chordoma cell line, and here you can see the brachyuri gene itself, and we've mapped an enormous 1,600,000 base pair region adjacent to it that's just chock full of enhancer activity. And this is really exciting for us because over the last four or five years, we've actually learned with some selectivity how to drug enhancers. We've learned the kind of proteins that tend to sit at enhancers, and we've learned how to hit them with small molecules. This is one small molecule. It's called THZ1. It was developed by Nathaniel Gray's lab back at the Dana-Farber where I trained. And it hits one of these proteins that binds to and is required for enhancers to turn on. When we treated chordoma cells with this compound, we could see that we incre as we increase the dose of this compound, brachyuri went away. So this is really exciting for us. And with the chordoma foundation, we're trying to partner with the pharmaceutical company, Ceros, that's bringing this drug to the clinic. And it represents an indirect way. We're not hitting brachyuria itself, but we're trying to turn it off. And, and this is really promising for us, um, but there are going to be side effects. Many different genes in your body are regulated by enhancers. Uh, it's not going to be as directly clean as if we can target brachyuria itself. And this is where we really want to go. And I really want to emphasize that it's early days in this process. We don't have ways to directly target brachyuria yet, uh, but we need to figure out how to get there. As I talked to you before, brachyuria is one of these undruggable proteins. It lacks what we have in pink here, this sort of classical active site, where if we could stick a small molecule there, we might be able to inhibit its function. So that's the bad news. But the good news is that we think brachyuria has lots of places where you can actually stick a small molecule. These are places where you could have a small molecule come, a drug-like molecule come, and bind to the protein. Now, it may not do anything to the protein, but it gives us a foothold. And there's a new, really exciting emerging technology that our lab and others have had to helped to develop, and that's targeted protein degradation. That if you can get a foothold onto a protein, we can recruit the cell's natural garbage disposal. These are proteins called E3 ligases. They go around, and they normally target proteins for degradation. Our whole idea is can we bring the degradation machinery to the proteins we want to target. And this is going to be a long process, but the first step in that is to figure out what that would look like. And so Hadley in my lab has been working to model degradation of brachyuri. And the way we can do that is we can actually clone these um, little bits of protein, almost like little gloves, onto brachyuri. And that provides sort of the left hand. And with the right hand, we can bring over these E3 ligases. And all of this is sort of nucleated by these compounds, these degronamids. This is a structure of one of our first ones seen here. And you can see sort of the left hand here and the right hand. And each of these sort of comes together. And when they do, the protein goes away. 
And so we've done this for other proteins in our lab, and brachyuri is coming up hopefully in the next few weeks. But this is what it looks like, that when we treat with our drugs, the proteins can go away. Now, I really want to emphasize that this doesn't mean we can do this to brachyuri in its native form. This is just the first step. But it's going to give us the sort of confidence to know that if we can actually degrade brachyuri, this is what might happen. This is what will happen in some of the preclinical models of the disease. And if that's still positive, then we're going to move forward trying to find binders to brachyuri itself with the underlying concept that we can take these binders and turn them into degraders. And so just to summarize really quickly, um, we're very excited about this work. We're very excited because we think brachyuri is not an undruggable target. We actually think it's a really good target. Um, we know that it's a gene that controls other genes, and so it's going to have systemic consequences on the chordoma genome. Um, we know that the chordoma, as far as we can tell, are truly and utterly addicted to brachyuri. And the goal of our lab, with the help of the Chordoma Foundation and our collaborators, is to find drugs that can either turn it off so that it never turns on in the chordoma cells, or to find ways to directly degrade it. And so this journey for our lab's work in chordoma really started back in 2014 when Josh showed up at the Broad Institute and gave a talk. And uh, none of us in that sort of first and second row had ever heard of chordoma. But by the end of that talk, we all had our laptops out and we were like furiously Googling and spitballing and brainstorming and coming up with really good ideas. And uh, it's an amazing experience to work with someone like Josh because all I knew at the end of that meeting was that I wanted to work on Chordoma. And so our lab now in Texas has continued that mission. Um, but most of what I told you today was really nucleated by that sort of initial meeting. This is the team at the Broad. There's Josh. Um, most of the work on the THZ1 was done by an incredibly talented postdoctoral associate, Tanaz Janayev. Um, this is Stu Schreiber, our sort of patron saint and godfather at the Broad. And I really want to thank um, our lab, especially Hadley Shepard, who's leading the charge, um, colleagues at Dana-Farber, and of course the Coroma Foundation. I'll just end by saying that our lab does basic science. We work on things that stick to DNA and try to figure out what happens. But we try to do it in a way that's really impactful and in a way that matters. And so um, if we can help at all, if we can interact with you, if we can help educate you about the science that we're doing and in turn learn about the disease itself, uh, we'd be really appreciative of that. So please contact me. There's my email and there's our lab's website. Thank you. Thank you.